y'all give me a minute. I got to get some things started, especially on my um, Instagram. This is my first time recording off of Instagram. It look like the camera's a little crooked. I apologize, but I literally have the camera stuck together with tape. I'm horrible. So let me do this thing here. I got to get two more things set up. Then we're going to take our time and we're going to do a broadcast. Something that I have to do. Um, I hope you all will stay tuned and, 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 and I'm going to try to do something that I, I usually don't do. <clears throat> If you come on and I can answer questions. So we're going to get started in a minute. The title of this is to my young bulls, male, female. This is part four of devils watching over us. The black man is the devil. And uh, so I want to get into this right now. And um, for anybody on you on um, Instagram, I don't know how long Instagram lasts, but I am a commentator. What I do is I um. I uh, broadcast messages with a purpose. I'm not your entertainer. I'm not your TikTok star. I'm not your Facebook star or your YouTube star. But we will be broadcasting this live now on Facebook. We're broadcasting on Instagram for the first time in a long time. I don't know how long it'll last, but we're going to go from there. We're broadcasting on YouTube as well. And also, I'm recording this. Um, so, yeah, we're very busy today. I hope you all will... Uh, and and um let's see let me start the time clock um i will be uploading there we go i'll be uploading the uh the broadcast from my um <laughs> which way am i going yeah from my 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 computer onto YouTube. So let's get this started. It'll be about an hour. I'll be broadcasting. And I hope you'll take this, like it, and share it for the young people out. Uh, we're, we're, we're really in a rough time right now. And we got, and somebody got to start telling the message. And it's got to be made very clear. So uh, from the title, yes, we're recording there. Um, let's see. Yeah, from the title, um, we're going to go from there. So let me do the intro and then we're going to move. All right. Very young, very short intro. This is Jamil Salib Zamir out of Manning, South Carolina. You are listening to the 19 Report. Um, I want to first give a shout out to Dale Castro Powell and Tebow TJ for the great show that was um was done on Sunday. If you haven't seen it, go back to Dale Castro's page or Tebow's page, or you can catch it on the 19 Report page as well. Very good show done, and I want to thank them for um, for 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 doing such a professional job with it. Now today, I'll be talking about something that some many of you of the old older people are uh, you're aware of. I want to use the analogy of the Wizard of Oz. And I want to teach you the secret in the Wizard of Oz. I want to tell you where that came from, because we have to stop looking at things as entertainment and start looking at them more so as a lesson that must be learned for our people. Uh, shout out to Dale Castro Powell, who told me to stop stroking people's ego. And that is our motto. We're no longer going to stroke your egos because God is after, south, after the South. Uh, God does not want the South to have to go through the torment and pain and hurt and suffering that we went through in slavery. But now instead of the white man doing the killing, the threatening, the murdering, the home invasions, it's our own people. And it's our own disconnected black males, black females who have no connection to their past who are doing these things, but thinking that they're doing something new when in actuality all you're doing is the same thing that has been done to us over and over again, which is uh, bullying, which is murder, destruction, and you all, this is at your hands. And I'm telling you, young people, you can't see it, but it's happening. You're going to die. Now, when a person is dead, they don't know they're dead, so it doesn't matter. A gunshot kills you, you don't know you're dead, especially if they shoot you from the back. 
But when you have to watch all your friends and family die and you got to wear shirt after shirt with rest in peace and free my dog and all of these other things, you're watching God allowing Satan to destroy your world right before your face. And you're so busy enjoying your death that you don't even know that you stink of death. You're rotting from the inside out. You're embalming yourself. With, the, with, the, with all of the chemicals and everything else that are, are being introduced into our bodies and then a mindset of an animal. We are embalming ourselves. So knowledge is being given to us. Knowledge has constantly being introduced to us. But we're rejecting the knowledge. And let me tell you this. Most of your ministers, your pastors, your politicians, they're in cahoots with Satan to put you in a category to kill you. Anytime you see, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches this, that anytime you see a rise in black people in positions of power, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're in power, but it means that they're the front person to keep you calm and docile while somebody else rules the world. So you can test all of your politicians. You can test all of your preachers and pastors by telling them, come to the community. Do something for the people, your constituents, the people who voted for you, who believed in you. Something besides a cookout, something besides a party, something of value. And I'm talking black, white, red, brown, and yellow. And this is why I'm going in the subject of the Wizard of Oz. Because I want each individual to understand that our journey is a personal journey. Don't matter how many people you got in your clique. Don't matter how many people you got in your church. Don't matter how many people you got in your gang, in your organization, who's the biggest. We all have to take this journey on our own. This is commanded by God and it will be carried out by Satan. Because Satan will test each one of us to see if we are worthy of standing on our own. And I'm telling you, most of us are not. That's how come we only get rah-rah when we're around a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? So I want to go into, for the older people, this uh, analogy of the Wizard of Oz. The, the Wizard of Oz, the old one with Dorothy and Toto and all of them. And then you can juxtapose that to... The Wiz with Dorothy, with uh, with um, Michael Jackson and, oh, Lord, what is her name? I can't even remember her name right now. But, um, oh, wow. Yeah, with Dorothy and with uh, Michael Jackson and uh, the black version of The Wiz. So I want to put this in your ear. I want to put this in your mind because it is necessary for Sugar Hill. Uh, when I was living across town in the early 90s, um, they were doing their thing on the corner, but I was studying Islam. I was studying uh, uh, um, um, the Kabbalah. I was a follower of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And I was fasting and doing and, and praying constantly all the time and following the rules of Islam. And in the midst of that time, Y'all remember that tree that was across the street from uh, Tim's shop where everybody would hide their work inside that, that tree? God gave me a vision one night where that tree was blowing and I noticed the tree and the whole block was empty and all the buildings were demolished. And I said, no way in the world will this ever stop. As active and all of the hustle and bustle across town, all of this stuff going on, God, no way in the world would this ever stop. It took about 10, 15 years, but now all of the memories from across town are just about wiped out. All of the stores, all of the homes, all of the people, all of the clubs, all gone. So when God makes a promise, his promise you can bank on. Okay. For Sugar Hill, the same thing. I saw fire coming from down at that store down there on the interstate, and that fire engulfed the entire community of Sugar Hill, all the way to Bloomsville, all of that. It just burned it. Because this is a place where school teachers, administrators, I mean, it was a community, people... Uh, uh, the, the elders built a community here, even had a corner store. 
where you played baseball. Now, as the elders are dying off and, 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 and being stressed out by the young ones, all of that is going away and younger people are moving into these homes on Sugar Hill and the younger people have no respect for the legacy of what the elders brought for them to appreciate. They don't appreciate it. We're going somewhere. I'm going to take my time with it, though, because I can't bite my tongue anymore. The 19 Report, The Truth Show, Tell It Like It Is, uh, 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 Microphone Check. The, the, somebody has to have the, the God, the God uh, spirit in order to tell our people what's happening, why it's happening, and what must be done. So if we don't change things here because Sugar Hill, as good as it was in its unity, there's also a horrible part to it. And that horrible part carries so many secrets with it. And in those secrets created something called black magic. So we're suffering from not black the color, but a dreadful uh, uh, what they call root and, and, um, and spells and and prayers against people. All of that was done here. You're talking about incestuous relationships. You're talking about rape. You're talking about molestation, male and female. All of that happened here on Sugar Hill. And it had to be covered up until this day. It is happening. God showed it to me. Brothers and sisters sleeping together. Mother and child sleeping together. Sexual relationships. N uh, abnormal things happening. And if we don't address it, and that's the reason why we don't feel we have a right to address anything because we feel like I'm so guilty. I shouldn't say anything. But the first thing we have to do is take accountability and the, and the wizard of Oz back during the sixties, the seventies, we watch it over and over again. So I want to go into this for a minute to show you how the occult, what you call Masons, what you call Shriners, what you call different occult groups, how they speak to each other and tell each other what must be done in order to keep their society flowing. So I was talking to someone on the phone earlier and I was telling them the hustlers back in the day, they would do little things to keep the people on their side, like during the holidays, they would buy them a turkey or a turkey dinner or serve food. But then there were sincere hustlers who actually paid people's rent, got their children out of trouble, saw the young people who had potential and made sure that no one bothered them, no one messed with them, no one pulled them into a gang, no one did anything wrong to them so that they could be an element of good for the community. And that's why God allowed the dirt to last so long, because in the dirt was good. But now you're killing everybody. You're killing the children. You're killing the intelligent people. You're killing the teachers. You're killing the preachers. You have no filter on the level of violence that you will commit against your own kind, your own people, and people of value. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that God is going to allow you to kill all the good, and then it'll just be all the evil left to deal with itself. There's a movie out that Mr. Uh, La uh, Larry, um, the, the photographer downtown, he suggested that I watch it, the white guy. It's called Atlas Shrug. It's a very difficult movie to watch and understand because it is an occult movie. But it tells you how all of the elite people who had something of value to offer, bankers, businessmen, all of them moved out of society and left the cities to the violence. So this is what's happening. All of them are coming down south and leaving the cities to the violence. But once the violence gets so out of hand that the, the, the criminal realize they're savage and they don't know how to do anything, where do you think they're going to come to? They're going to come to the south. So they come down here with their criminal records, their jail records, and their, their clout, and some of them make up clout, and they... They entice these young boys who ain't never been nowhere. Some of them scared to fly. Some of them can't get a passport. Some of them don't have a license. Some of them never have enough money to leave the city. You leave here, go to New York, riding with your family, but you don't get to experience New York. We're 14 minutes in. I want to go into the secret occult route 
message of uh, the Wizard of Oz. Now, I know most people, I don't know that. I pray that Almighty God Allah will permit more people to watch what we post, how we post it. But there's a level of accountability that is necessary. You're killing everybody. You're killing all of the potential. And now as I, I was on the table talk with uh, Xavier Miller, and I said by God's permission, give it a little bit of time this year, going to be the year of robbery, of home invasions. And it started already. You see two men pulling up, pulling a, a whole ATM machine from the store. Young boys getting left in the street with their pants down, being robbed. And those of you who think that you are in the clear with what you're doing, if people know you got money, they want it. They want it. They want your money. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There is no friendship here because the loyalty and the level of loyalty, we don't know what loyalty is. Now, I'm going to give you the, 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 the occult insight to the Wizard of Oz, and I'm, I'm going to shut it down. And tomorrow, God willing, I'm going to explain to you why we are the devil. The black man is the devil because out of God's mercy, he brought something out of our genetic makeup that we could see it face to face and say, wow, that's bad. I don't accept that. But instead of saying it's bad, I don't accept it. We accepted it. So all of the things that were done to us as black people in this country, when a man could come into your house, you laying in the bed with your wife and your children in the room sleep. And a white man comes into your house and say, move over, nigga. We want to sleep with your, your wife. We. And don't you leave the room, nigga, because we're going to keep an eye on you. So you got to sit there as three, four, five men lay with your wife. And after they lay with your wife, you can't talk about it and she can't talk about it. Now, the black man is doing this to his own people. I'm going to sleep with your wife. I'm going to make your children call me daddy, and I'm going to leave the bitch. See, we became and we are and shall become our own worst enemy, and we will destroy ourselves, and God is going to allow it. And some of us in our ignorance, we actually think this is good. You think it's good that you kill your brother. Because he got on a different color than you. You think that is good that you rob somebody because they got more money than you. You think that is good that you bring your crew of gang members and criminals to do wrong in the neighborhood and destroy the neighborhood like this Detroit is destroyed. Chicago parts of it is destroyed. Harlem is gone. The white folks waiting until we tore it up and they bought it. Brooklyn, the brownstones, they took it. They bought it. They did it cross town in Manning, waited until we tore it down and they bought it and will continue to buy it. This ain't got nothing to do with racism or hatred. This got to do with the facts that were placed before us that we don't pay attention to. And you're just happy. You know what the worst thing that was done to us as a people? Individualism. We started to thinking, since I got mine, you can get yours. Well, dude, if you got it and I ain't got it, I'll take it from you because I'm stronger than you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Y'all forgive me because my phone is ringing up top, but it'll stop in a minute. Let me see if I could decline the call. Because once I start to talking, uh, some of my brothers are going to call me and they'll send a text or whatever if I'm going too far in what I'm saying because some of it you shouldn't even know yet. But I got permission to talk about the cult, the occult root of the Wizard of Oz and I'm going to talk about it. I know you all remember the show with Dorothy, the Tin Man, the, the, the uh, Scarecrow, and the Lion. So I want to go into the root of it. I want to go into what it is. Now, many of you don't know anything about an occult belief system called theosophy. Now, this is going to uh, throw a lot of you, but just be patient. It's called theosophy. And theosophy and theosophists and the theosophy religious belief system believes that there is good in all religions. And they believe that the only religion is truth. I'm going to put that on a shirt. 
the only religion is truth. It's the same belief that um, uh, Halle Selassie, Bob Marley, all of these people, they, they, you, you hear them say it all the time. The only religion is truth. We believe that the only religion is the religion that most people join or the, or the religion that is conducive to how I think. But the Osophists believe, and they went off course a little bit because when white folks begin to study something, they always got to make everything white. Like Christianity, they were on point, but Jesus was black. But they got to paint everything white. So when you do that, you knock the truth off balance. So the truth becomes a half truth, which is a lie. But our people, when we dream about Christ, we see a white man. That's a lie. But God lets it slide as long as you're getting the understanding of what the man's purpose was. And that's why some of you who sell drugs, do evil, you, he lets you slide. Because you're fair in what you're doing, but it won't last forever. God showed me this. When things crash, they will crash. There always has to be a warner. There's all, there always has to be a watchman. There always has to be someone who God gives the message to who it will either say, okay, I accept the message a lot and I'm going to tell the people or I know what you're saying, but I'm going this way. I was given a choice. Talented, I'm talented, man. Music, DJing, uh, graffiti, clothing design from sewing to everything else, broadcasting. I was offered a, a radio personality uh, broadcasting position on a white station, though. And they were telling me I could no longer talk black and white. I just got to talk based on what they give me. I couldn't take it. Because God said to do something else. Talk to your people and tell them what's going on so they can make an intelligent, uh, an, an intelligent decision as to which way they want to go. Jesus wasn't white. But the knowledge in the, in the Bible is good for us. So the theosophists, whose motto is, the only religion is truth, vowed to always tell truth in whatever they do. There is truth in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom with, with uh, uh, produced by, I think, Jordan Peele and Denzel Washington, I think. I know Denzel has something to do with it. There is truth in I Am Legend. There is truth in Seven Pounds. There is truth in all of the shows that Will Smith do, Tyler Perry do. But in the midst of that truth is always something that entertains you and always something that disgusts you. So you have to grow up. You have to understand how to siphon out the good. Listen, if you eat chitlins, you can handle truth because chitlins is guts with stinky in it. And you clean the stinky out and cook it and eat the stink guts of a pig, which is the most disgusting animal that God disagrees with. The pig was made to be a medicine for white folks. That's where they get the insulin from high blood pressure pills, the gel caps, all that stuff is parts of the pig. This is all true. This ain't racism. This is what theosophy is. But the theosophy society were all white. Now let's go into this real quick, the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to show you how <coughs> this journey that you have to take, no matter how big your gang is, no matter how big your group is, no matter how big your church is, no matter how big your fraternity, sorority is, each individual is held accountable for themselves. And there are certain things that God gives you to carry on your journey. He gives you yourself. He gives you your gut feeling, your animal instinct. He gives you courage. He gives you a heart. And he gives you a brain. Now, let's go into the Wizard of Oz, the secret message in it. The Theosoph, I got my notes up here, so I'll be reading from up here. We are 23 minutes in. I said, give me an hour. The, Theos the Theosophical Society is an occult organization mainly based on the teachings of Helena P. Blavatsky. Now, I studied Helen Blavatsky at the, at the request of Derek Mack, Derek Thames. That was my partner in 
Derek helped me through so many of my rough times. Now, he go through his troubles. But when I when I damaged all the nerves in my hand and couldn't feel anything, when when I broke my hand and I'm, I mean, all of my pain and suffering, that brother was right there with me. He was right there with me. That brother used to bring, he used to make money. And he used to bring money to me, Derek Mack, Derek Thames, Derek Mack. That brother moved out of his house across town. It's torn down now. It was bought by uh, Hurt Conyers, Good Blood Shop. He moved out of his home when I had to put my family in a house and we didn't have no place to go. He left it and, and let us move in and take up and take up the rent. But he was living in New York and he heard about Madame Blavatsky. And he called me and said, have you ever heard of Madame Blavatsky? Now, this is in the 90s. I never heard of her. So I started studying Helena Blavatsky, but it, the, the Internet wasn't out then. So we had to find the wisdom, the knowledge through books. He would send me books and uh, whatever we could find in the library, which you weren't going to find anything about Helen Blavatsky because that was a secret organization and occult knowledge. But Helen P. Blavatsky is who Adolf Hitler followed her philosophy to, 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 to make to, for Germany to rise. He kept her books on a, on, near his bed at night. Helen P. Blavatsky, but we're talking about the Wizard of Oz. I want to drop these things on you because y'all got to start to study more. You can't just be one way. You can't just be evil. You can't just be gang gang. You can't just be preacher. You can't just be politician. You can't. You have to swing back the other way and, find, and go and reach some of your people. So Helen Blavatsky to, she was seeking the, to, the, to extract the common root of all religion in order to form a universal doctrine. So she studied all different religions. She studied Zoysterism, Zoysterism the Chaldeans, the Egyptians, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, as I have. We're instructed to study all of these occult. I've studied... Uh, I've been allowed into the Masonic order. I've been, we were the first Muslims to join. We were the first young boys, 18, 19, to join temple number 99 in Manning as junior Knights of Pythagoras. We were allowed to study the Shriners. We were allowed to study more than most. We were side by side with, uh, with Jeff Black, Jeffrey Black. We were there with him. When, they, when the old armory was there, we were invited. Whatever they were doing, we were there, young boys. Uh, Betty Roper, we were there with them. When she had the radio station up here, it's now a firehouse. We were studying under their tutelage, under the guidance of, of Sultan Muhammad, under the guidance of, of Judge Willie Bethune and, and Johnny Wilson, all members of the, of the, of the, of the, of the temple. So I'm not telling you a lie. I got to say these things to you. We got time. It's 27 minutes in. Out of all the people that were taught that knowledge, the only one that's left is me. I'm the last one. Derek is still there, but he's going through his trials. But I heard it. I believed it. And by God's permission, I stuck to it. And I know Derek still sticks to it, but he's going through a fight in his own self that he has to deal with. So this theosophy. And the Wizard of Oz, I'm showing you how they are telling you that you got to go through your trial by yourself. Jesus Christ was an example of you going through your trials by yourself. But what did we do? We say, Jesus died for my sins. I, I ain't got to worry about nothing. So you telling me, if I, if I believe in Jesus Christ and I, I rape you, rape your child, I shouldn't go to jail because Jesus died for my sins. See, it doesn't make sense, does it? I blow your brains out in front of your children or kill your children in front of you. And I fall on my knees and say, Lord, Jesus, forgive me. I'm supposed to be forgiven. No, there's a journey that we have to take. And that journey will will cause us to face the realities that we are afraid to face. So you will literally die from stress 
understanding God and your journey. And most people can't do that. So your heart is gangster, stays high, can't handle the journey. Your biggest, best preacher, usually in some homosexual relationship, are womanizing because the journey is so hard. Your politicians, they crooked. I'm telling you what I know. Ain't nobody exempt from this. And anyone that comes before you to point this out, you say, they're the bad guy. They're causing um, uh, divisiveness. But check out what Jesus Christ said. Think not that I came to bring peace, nay, a sword. I came to set a father at variance with his son, a mother against her, her daughter. I came to set nations against each other, to separate the wheat from the tare. I came to make problems. Why you got to stir it up, Jesus? Because you got to know that this journey is an individual journey that eventually we will all unite together if we take the journey properly. See, you can't let a bunch of healthy cells um, travel amongst a cancerous cell because that one cancerous cell will destroy the other healthy cells. So when you're building your own self, your own church, because the person is the church, when you're building your church, you have, to, you have to exercise all the demons of yourself, at least be able to identify them. I remember my son, Kwame, when he was younger, I saw three demons trying their best to get into that boy when he was three years old. And I tried my best to block him. I stood in front of him as a father would do to separate the demons. They went through me into him. He fighting them demons. I saw my son, um, little Keith fighting. I fought with these snakes that were after him. Those demons he got to deal with or else he will always be making excuses that it's always somebody else's fault. You understand what I'm saying? So anytime a person leaves home unsatisfied or they're at home and the, the home life is not so good, they're always blaming someone. So then they get together with a group of people who agree like they agree and they wreak havoc. They do the same thing that they claim they didn't like, they do it to other people. Your parents are afraid or they're joining into your foolishness because they love that drug money. They love that hustle money. So they let you do what you want and they back your foolishness. But that only creates karma. And we're going to talk about that. Now, let's get into the Wizard of Oz. We're going to close. It's 31 minutes. We got like 29 minutes to get it done. Helen Blavatsky. Look her up. Helena P. Blavatsky. Hitler, Hitler followed her book in order to take over, in order to kill the, the Jews. That's what he did. Let's get into it. I don't want to get into the, the particulars. You can look up Helen Blavatsky. I will say that they even started practicing in uh, sexual magic, which I introduced to one of my sons and I told him to try it. He did. You can build a woman up to the highest status of womanhood through sex. Or you can break her down and make her a bitch through sex. You can build a man up through the biggest position in sex. Or you can break him down. I was broken in sex. But I tried to build my, my now wife. I, I build her through sex. She's a beast. She's an animal. In a good way. You're not going to get over on her. And if... And if you're too big for her, then she's going to call me. And if you're too big for me, I'm going to call God. But I'm calling God the whole time. But there, we have the ability to help each other in a big way. This right here is black cherry juice. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and uh, Himalayan salt. This, uh, this helps me, helps my blood to flow. The black cherry juice flushes out the uh, acid in the blood and the uric acid, which causes gout. And the minerals in it actually helps my stomach, just in case you want to know. I don't put anyone's label on my bottles because I'm not promoting anyone for free. If you want to get promoted on any of our shows, you got to put the money up top, okay? So that's just the way it is. Now let's get into this. For all of the older ones who know about the Wizard of Oz, it's, it's not going to take long. Uh, L. Frank Baum, he's a theosophist. He's the one who wrote the Wizard of Oz. But I want to point out to you, the three things, as I said, I wrote so much and I knew I wasn't going to be able to, to talk about all of it. 
But The Wizard of Oz is a story about the path, and I got to go through this slow, about the path of illumination. When a person is illuminated, you say they are, they are, um, what do you call it? They, they say you join the Illuminati. Illumination means that you, 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 your pineal gland is open and you see reality. See, they make everything that's good, they make bad. Everything that's bad, they make good. They reverse God to dog. So we like dog better. We like the nasty, filthy dog better. So we call each other dog. What up, dog? But the five percenters and the, the, the organizations who are understanding the science of, of wisdom and knowledge, we flip that back around and we say, what up, God? What up, king? You understand what I'm saying? But you got to live up to that or God will destroy you. It's the way we're going. I love it. I'm scared to death, but I love it because I know it has to be so. And only men, only warriors can take this path. Understand me. It don't take a warrior to kill somebody. I, you're going to be tricker. You're going to be quicker on the trigger than me because I see another God when I look. You just see a nigga or, or, or a slob or a goofy. That's what you see. And in the political realm, all you see is someone who's destroying your chances at wealth. See, black folks getting more in the South than we ever got. We are being given these positions, but we're not in control of them. We're not. We're the, the, we're the front person. We're qualified for it. But we're not the front person. You like the shirts on the wall? Those shirts are for sale. All of our apparel is positive frequency apparel. You see Bonafide, you see the Strive, you see the Black Card, you see Wabi Sabi. All of these things are positive reaffirmations. All are for sale. Our T-shirts are 20. T-shirt with the hats are, are 25 to 30. Our custom design um, sweatshirts are available as well. Airbrush material uh, to a degree because I can't airbrush like I used to. Now, let's get into this thing. The Wizard of Oz. It's about a 12-year-old farm girl named Dorothy who lives in Kansas on a farm with her aunt and her uncle. All of the people that she end up seeing as the tin man, the witch, the, the, the straw man and the lion, all of these people she lived with in Kansas. But Dorothy felt trapped in Kansas. So Dorothy used to sing a song somewhere over the rainbow. She's looking for a new reality. Like most of us live vicariously through other people as I was talking to my son earlier. We're looking for another reality. So in our subconscious mind, we're saying, I'm not satisfied with who and what I am. I don't know how to get out of that situation. I don't have the heart to try, but I can blame people. And I can live vicariously through someone else. So Dorothy is thinking, oh, if I could just leave Kansas. You thinking if I could just get out of Manning, if I could get out of New York, if I could get out of Boston, if I could get out of New Jersey, if I could just get down to Atlanta. It's always a location with us that's supposed to make our life so much better. But wherever you are, is where you have to begin to make your life better. That is the beginning of the story of the Wizard of Oz. This Dorothy, who is unsatisfied with her life, but she got this dog with her, Toto. Toto, through the entire movie, is the animal instinct of Dorothy. Your and my animal instinct is our self-accusing spirit, that gut feeling that says, some ain't right. Some ain't right. Something, I, I, something is telling me not, even if you're not sure, you got to move on that because that is the part of you that that minute mustard seed of God. That's all you got. So throughout the entire film, Toto was the one that was leading Dorothy to a, away from the bad and to the good. And you would hear through the whole flick, Toto, Toto, come back, Toto, Toto. Realized that the scarecrow was real. She's like, that's silly. No scarecrow is real. That's us saying, I ain't scared of nothing. I ain't scared of nobody. Everybody's scared of something. But we won't face that reality so we can't be truthful to ourselves. So Toto is barking at the scarecrow. And the scarecrow is afraid of the crows. 
I said the scarecrow is afraid of the crows. But the crows are also afraid of the scarecrow. All he had to do is come down. And he says to Dorothy, you mean to tell me I've been up there all that time and all I had to do is come down? You mean to tell me that I didn't try my entire life and all I had to do was try? And I would have moved further? So the, the scarecrow, he don't have no brains. He says, I ain't got no brains. She said, come to, to see the wizard with me. Who is the wizard? The wizard is this make-believe belief system that we all have, that there is something there that is going to save us, that wakes us up, that motivates us. But the wizard turns out to be a lie because the wizard is an illusion. Hello, somebody. You're in my life. When I get this car, when I get this house, when I get this, if I get that, if I got all this gold, nigga, I got $20,000 worth of diamonds on. They don't feel no better. If you got to go to the bathroom, you still got to go with $20,000 worth of diamonds on. It's the illusion, young, young, young bulls. We love the illusion. Look at the Wizard of Oz again after I finish with this by God's permission. Now, let's go a little further. Dorothy wants to go over the rainbow. She wants to start her journey. Most of you want to come out of mama's house, start your journey, but you start, you jump off the porch wrong. So because God is trying to help you along, he sends obstacles in your way, witches, goblins, goons, um, uh, uh, tornadoes, houses, disruptions to get you back on the path. Now, if you heed the warning, you get back on the path. By the time you're 25, 26, you know what you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing. You find your purpose. So what has to happen in the life of Dorothy? Dorothy has to be caught up in a cyclone, a tornado that comes out of nowhere and picks the house up. And as she starts twirling, she starts dreaming. This world has put us in a dream state. And anyone that tries to wake you up is an enemy to you. Jesus came to wake the people up and he became an enemy to them. So if you got the biggest church in the world and everybody love you, might be a problem because Christ was a, a problem. They came after him. Who are you to tell us what we should be doing? You ain't even got no daddy. You ain't do this. Remember uh, uh, Moses leading the people to the promised land? The first thing they said, hey, didn't you kill somebody? You killed somebody, Moses, which Moses did kill somebody. Helping somebody else, Moses struck a man and killed him. Sound familiar, young boys? Helping somebody else. You kill somebody. All right, let's go. Dorothy is caught up in a cyclone. You are going through a cyclical motion of birth and death. You have to go through seven stages. Nobody ever told you that. That's why the gods wear the seven. That's why the gods stay on the seven. Because there are seven different stages of life you got to go through. And, and you young boys who claim you representing the 5% nation or the Moors or the nation of Islam, if y'all don't start coming correct, I posted it up. The gods are coming. And these brothers, myself included, when God says to move, you move. Because I'm going to move when God say to move. I know that with God's permission, I chop your behind in half. I mean with a damn sling blade if I got to. Because God has done, Allah has done so much for us and raised us out of ignorance. We ain't going to let it slide. And there ain't too many of us you're going to kill before the, the wrath of God comes down. That's just the way it is. When Jesus came, Jesus said, think not that I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Sword is for cutting stuff. Understand that. We're not built the same. I can't shoot you and kill you and, and just because I got a big gun with a, with a dot on it, just shoot up you. I can't do that. We, that's not us. 
here we are. Physical birth, death of the soul. We're looking for an answer. Let's go a little deeper. The yellow brick road of Oz begins as an outward expanded spiral. In occult symbolism, this spiral represents the evolution of self, the soul, ascending from matter into the spirit world. You got to go to the spirit world. Jesus went up on the mount to be tested by the devil. I can't remember how many days and how many nights. I apologize. I think it was seven days and seven nights. I'm not sure. Whatever the case may be, he was tested. So you got to leave the uh, Moses went up and left the people. You got to go to the spiritual world. You got no choice. Some of us can handle it. Most of us cannot. Most of us, we get so afraid that we get back and we start smoking and drinking to forget. We rather deal with gang violence and, and, and crookedness and selfishness than to deal with this spirit. Well, we're talking about the Wizard of Oz, but I'm going into the black man is the devil. I won't get it, be able to do that part now, but I'm going to finish with the Wizard of Oz part spiral. The spiral path of a point generally plane. I'm talking about a plane in mathematics, which moves around an axis while continually approaching its receding it or receding from it. Also often used for helix, which is generated by compounding a circular motion with one in a straight line. This is the knowledge that when you say you are five percenter, when you say you are Muslim, when you say you are a true Christian, when you say you stand on the seven on the square, when you use the title king, when you use the title queen, when you use the title God. This is the information that you're supposed to know. And if you don't know it, just getting high don't mean you a king, queen or nothing. I'm sorry. But the knowledge of God has to be the key to everything now. Rather you accept it or reject it, man. God going to give us some leniency. You can party. You can smoke your weed. You can drink. But there's, there's a, listen, <laughs> every prophet and messenger got something. Some of them needed more than one woman. Some of them needed liquor. I don't think weed was the thing then, but it might have been a mushroom or something they snort. But the journey is so difficult. Yeah, you're going to get a break. God ain't out to kill you, black man, because you sell weed or crack, but it can't remain. You can't continue to do it. You got to transition from that to something else. We're talking now, the Wizard of Oz. <coughs> the spiritual form is an apt illusion of the course of evolution, which brings more motion around towards the same point, yet without repetition, which means you're going to go through circles of life. You know, um, the Lion King talks about the circle of life, but you don't go in a cyclical motion where you're constantly going through the same thing over and over. Because if you're going through the same thing over and over, that means you're not learning anything. So I'm out here. My boy gets killed. My other boy gets killed. I go and kill a boy. They boy kill my boy. They shoot up my house. I shoot them niggas up. We kill them niggas. Them niggas kill them niggas. And then everybody dead. You are in a cyclical motion. You ain't learned a damn thing and you ain't made no money. Why you ain't made no money? Because you're still living with your mama. Why you ain't made no money? Because you ain't driving no Maybach. You ain't driving no Porsche. You ain't driving nothing that takes a lot of money to maintain. You ain't living like that. So the goal of doing what you're doing, you don't achieve it. So you're constantly in a cyclical motion fooling yourself because you have $10,000. That's chump change chumps. That's nothing when you got bills to pay. Understand where I'm coming. I'm not beating down on you. I'm trying to teach you something by God's permission and lift you up. We got to do it. We got to begin to talk like this. We got to. But this is out of love for you. This is out of all the times when God calls you to account and he says, I was teaching you. I was allowing you to learn. And you all you did, you just took it as entertainment. You understand what I'm saying? So we got to learn to balance ourselves, balance, balance, balance. And balance is not just right to left. Balance is up and down. That's why when you see the symbol of Hitler, which is the swastika, they even took that out of context. That is literally just a cross with, with different angles on it, with, with curves on it. But that is a, a balance. All, each one, each line is, is, is the same length. 
And it's the same cross that you use when you're talking about Christ. Almost the same four lines that are in the peace symbol that just join together. But it is the, the, the vertical and the horizontal evenly. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a line that's even. The same, the same thing you do vertical, vertical, you do horizontal. So there is a balance in it. And anybody that you know will talk about the balance of nature, the balance of society. And when you can't balance society, balance yourself, you begin to lean too far to one side. You lean too far to the left. You go into devilishment and foolishness and dreams and vicarious living and lies and death and murder. You balance too far to the right and you think yourselves better than everybody else. Again, dreams, the ego, it has to be balanced. So Hitler was trying to balance his mastery, but he got, he overindulged and he had to be stopped. Same thing happened to the Klan and it'll happen again. Same thing happened to most black organizations. It'll happen again. Same thing's going to happen in society. You think it's great, all these black people getting in positions of power, but they're going to get arrogant and they're going to want to start their own society away from you. So they're going to allow you and your craziness to continue over there. And over here is where we live. In Sugar Hill is where I live. So in Chicago, Mayor Lightfoot says, leave the cops alone. I mean, leave the, the, the criminals alone. Let them, let them vent their anger. But when the criminals came to her house, she called the police. Y'all ain't supposed to come here. Y'all supposed to stay over there. So too much of anything. And you see your black people in South Carolina and Manning, they, they party together. What are they talking about? What do they know that we don't know? How should we prepare to take care of ourselves, police our own communities, love each other, respect each other, pull our resources that we can outvote anybody out of office when we want to? We're talking about the Wizard of Oz. We're talking about balance. Now, the serpents in the figure eight are denoting the odd dodge and infinity stand for spiral cyclical motion. Anytime a person is going in a cyclical motion, they have potential. Now, before overtaking her journey, Dorothy is given a silver shoe. They, they changed the silver shoe to ruby slippers in the movie. But the silver shoe is even mentioned in the, the silver or the silver st string is mentioned in biblical text. I think Ecclesiastes. Let me look. Yeah. In Ecclesiastes, it says, or ever the silver cord be loosed. That is a part of God's code. That's why Bible is so important. But you got to get Bible taught the right way. And you got to stop being afraid to step outside of the box. You, you're not woke if you just listen to somebody say something you never heard and you believe it. That's not being woke. You got to be able to prove what you say. That's why I don't talk about money and wealth as much as I would like, because I am don't have no money and I'm not wealthy. I just know people who are wealthy. And, I, and if I need something, I can get it. And I got good credit. But that's not money. Now, let's go into this thing and we're going to close it. During her journey along the yellow brick road, Dorothy encounters the scarecrow, the ten, the ten woodsmen and the cowardly lion who are respectively searching for a brain, a heart and courage. Remember I said what you got to have to take your journey? See, when I see these young boys out here, all of them hanging together and they can kill and all of that, I never see them alone. And if they're alone, they're doing this. They got to they gotta smoke, smoke, smoke. Nigga, when I ain't smoking, nigga, I'm on 10. I know. I know you on 10. And when you on 10, which is where you're supposed to be, you can't handle being on 10 because you don't know what to do. You're walking around looking like a... Uh, 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 uh. Balance yourself. Remember that cartoon, How to Tame Your Dragon? That ain't just for entertainment. You are a dragon. You a beast. God wants you to control yourself. So these characters, the lion, searching for a brain and a heart and courage, those odd characters embody the qualities needed by the initiate in order to complete their quest for illumination. Now, let me tell you something. 
No one can illuminate you. Many of you saying, oh, they're part of Illuminati. They're part of Illuminati. They're part of Illuminati. They may have agreed to something, but there is no man that can illuminate you. Your journey to illumination, you got to take on your own. Jesus and all the prophets and messengers of God, including Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were illuminated. But they took their journeys. The prophet, they have a, a surah in the Quran that's called the night journey. You got to take your own journey. You got to learn your own lessons, and then you can meet up with this next person who has qualities that you need, and you can work together. My son is 14 years old, and he's going to come on sometime this week, God willing, talking about musical chords and how as, as long as they're far away from each other, they are harmony. They're in harmony. But the closer they get to each other, the harmony gets distorted. So you got to take this journey on your own. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, we're almost finished. We're 54 minutes in. I think I'm going to go a little over. If I, I'm, I'm going to stop if I have to. We just have to start again now. The odd characters, the qualities needed by the initiate in order to complete their quest for illumination. That's what Baum, Baum which who, who is a theosophist, who wrote the movie. That's what he was trying to express. That was the story. To complete their quest for illumination, Baum was, the, was pretty much telling you, you got to take this journey on your own. And he said, specifically, you got to have these things. Because you're soft. You got to have your animal instinct, which is your intuition. Something don't feel right. That's Toto. You got to have the ability to think clearly, which is the straw man, because he was looking for a brain. You got to have heart, which is the tin man, because you're stiff and you're afraid to make moves that are necessary to, to make. And you got to have courage, which is the lion. You got to have these things to walk the journey alone. And if nothing else you learn out of the biblical text about Jesus Christ, understand those things. Jesus had all of these attributes. And now you're saying, I don't have to have them attributes because Jesus died for me and he did it all. No, ma'am. No, sir. I don't care how successful you are in this life. The Bible says to come out of this world because this world is a world of illusion. So you can take the money and the power and the position and do well. But if you think that those things are, are, are um, um, identify who you are as a person, you're sadly mistaken. Who are you? I'm a drug dealer, nigga. That's not who you are. Who are you? I'm, a, I'm, I'm the mayor. That's not who you are. Who are you? I'm, 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 the, uh, I'm so-and-so. That's not who you are. Who are you? Oh, I'm a child of God. And I believe, in fact, I know, that God brought us here to love one another, not hate one another to find the good qualities of each other and to, and to sharpen each other when we find parts of each other that aren't conducive to the way society and community should be. Men sharpen men like steel sharpen steel. So I'm not going to talk behind your back when you got a shortcoming. I'm going to tell you to your face first. And there's nobody on Sugar Hill that don't, can, they put a lot of mess on Jamil. But I go to them and I say, yo, man, you shouldn't do this. Well, if they don't respect you, they're not going to listen. So what I do next, do I kill you? No, I got to bring in somebody who can mediate. Who's the mediator? The authorities. I ain't got no choice. Now, if it don't work after that, then we're going to probably have a bigger problem. But that's how society works. Do you understand me? Man, you can't even go to somebody's house and ask them to turn their front porch light off. They'll kill you. So you have to have what? brains how do i handle this situation based on the way this person is they always challenge and stuff but they they'll listen if this person say it so i'll take this person with me or i'll go ask this person to handle it now the wizard surrounded by artifices and we're going to finish with the wizard and special effects the wizard comes across as a crude rude and uh, and unwise the wizard is in fact a stand-in for the person the personality of God, of the Christians and the Jews, the oppressive figure used by conventional religion to keep the masses in spiritual darkness. What do you mean? The wizard used an illusion to scare you away from asking him anything. What the preacher do if you ask him a question that conflicts with what he believes? He gets rowdy and he say, you just don't believe. You don't believe. You don't believe. You a heathen. You, you a devil. But he doesn't answer the question. 
because he hides behind this big illusion of a God that backs him, that you, the nerve of you to ask me. The Quran says that you can ask God how. The Quran says that you can ask the prophets and messengers just at the right time. Don't be disrespectful. So there is no church in South Carolina that I am aware of that have question and answer sessions after church. If there's anything you didn't understand before we leave, we're going to have 30 minutes. You can ask me questions. And if I don't know the answer to the question, I'll answer it for you later because I want you to leave here with clarity. So that's the wizard when he's behind the curtain. He oppresses people. It's later discovered that the wizard is a humbug, a charlatan who scares people into worshiping him. He surely could not help the character completed that request because he couldn't, he couldn't, once he was found out, and guess who found out who the wizard was? Y'all remember the Wizard of Oz? Who found out who the wizard was? Toto. Toto jumped out of Dorothy's hand and pulled the curtain back. That is your intuition. When you feel something ain't right, stick with it. You ain't got to be verbal and vocal about it, but just be cautious. When they talk about being dangerous, you think that means shoot anybody that look at you funny. Being dangerous is being aware. I got you. I see you. Toto is the, is the protector. And you and my protector are the self-accusing spirit in us that says, oh, man, don't do that. There's something ain't going to work out right with that one. Are y'all understanding me? Rather you're looking at the Wizard of Oz or rather you're looking at the Wiz with, uh, I still can't remember her name, <laughs> with Michael Jackson and, um, oh, Lord. You know who I'm talking about. Is it, um. Uh, Oh, my goodness. I'll remember her name before I'm done. I got like five minutes left. So Toto represents the inner, intuitive, instinctual, most animal-like part of us. Throughout the movie, movie, Dorothy has conversations with Toto or her inner, intuitive self. If you're not talking to your inner self, you ain't, you, you, you ain't even on the journey yet. So most people, they got to call somebody to ask them. But something in you should already know something's not right. And most of us are dead. Most of our young boys are dead because they knew something was not right, but they did it anyway. When your intuition tells you something, act on it. You can always come back and say, man, I'm sorry about that, bro. My mind was tripping. I was tripping. Yeah, I'm tripping. You know what I mean? The lesson here is to listen to the total within. I'm going to close on this. Toto was never wrong. When he barks at the scarecrow, Dorothy tries to ignore him, but it comes out. Yeah, it's real. Toto is the ticket. Your self-accusing spirit is the ticket. Diana Ross, thank you, son. Lord have mercy. I, I was going to say Dorothy Ross. <laughs> Praise the Lord, qualms. Praise the Lord, boy. Diana Ross, rather you're looking at the Wizard of Oz or the Wiz. And you know how people tried to take the whiz and say, right there when, when, when Michael was on the scarecrow, he was singing that song, you can't win. They saying that he was saying he can't get out of the game. But he was telling you something. He was teaching you something. And when power goes to your head, power turns you into the same demon that not having something turns you in. When a person ribs is touching, they turn into a demon. DMX say ribs are touching. You know, y'all been eating long enough. And when you get too much, it's the same thing. You want more and more and more. So when, when you get excited about people being in positions of power, you got to watch them. And you cannot allow them to take too much power from you, the people. The people have the power. Do you understand what I'm saying? 10,000 healthy cells. And all it takes is one cancerous cell to gradually destroy all the healthy cells. So when something is wrong, you got to call a spade a spade. That ain't snitching. That's protection. That's survival. You, the Arab Elijah Muhammad teaches us this. When you see a devil amongst the brotherhood, you put him in the front of the brotherhood in the chair and you call him out. Nigga, what are you doing? Why are you trying to destroy this thing of ours? Y'all like to call it La Costa Nostra. Italian. Italians don't care about y'all. Only thing y'all know Italian is Isis. 
You understand what I'm saying? Find your own self. Find your own place. Take your journey. Be Dorothy. Jump into the cyclone. And the last thing I want to say is this. The wizard was going to lie to Dorothy to the very end. He said, oh, all you want to do is go back to Kansas? I could take you to Kansas knowing good and damn well he couldn't do it. So he puts her on a balloon, an air balloon. And who jumps off the balloon? Toto. So she jumps off the balloon, Toto, 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 Toto. And the balloon leaves, saving Dorothy. Then her spirit guide comes and said, you ain't never needed that balloon anyway. All you got to do is believe in yourself and you can go back home to where you were. And that's when she clicked the heels together. She connected the silver uh, rope as mentioned in Ecclesiastes in the Bible. And she's clicked it three times. Three is a, is, is a multiple. Three, six, and nine. And nine represents completion. Nine months to, to bring a baby into the world. You know, nine months to make a God. So she clicked it. There's no place like home. No place like home. And she believed it. And she was allowed to go home. I'm telling you, no matter what we want out of this life, if we unite and we believe it and we take our individual journey and we respect each other's travels and we help each other when we're down and we back away when we know you got to go through this on your own. Man, if you do a crime, do your time. I'm going to look out for you, but I ain't going to lie for you. You understand what I'm saying? You feeling me? You got to let people go through what they got to go through. If they cause the problem, they got to bring the solution. And if they don't bring the solution, then the cyclical motion continues and we will never grow. I don't care who gets in the office. I don't care what the color of their skin is. I don't care what they promise you. I don't care what they say they're going to do it in what time limit. I don't care what kind of money they give you, what they give you to rise or what they do to make you fall. There's nothing of value we will ever build if we don't go through our own journeys. I know what manhood is because Allah made me a man i don't care who can beat me who can kill me everybody gotta die but i know what manhood is because i went through my journey on my own with god and you will continue to go through that journey for the rest of your life you don't know nothing about struggle until you accept your journey and you get caught up in that cyclone and you got to deal with it. But you all are following other people's path and you're saying I'm great because I'm doing what they're doing. But you only great when you take your own path and you prove your own worth and you take your worth and you add it on to someone else's worth. And that was Dorothy's journey. So two witches had to die. The two witches that had to die are the ones that created the horizontal. One of them was hit with the tree. The other one, the water was thrown on her. Just water. Dorothy was running from the evil through the whole movie, and all they had to do is throw water. And what did she say? What a world. What a world. Just that simple. Deny the devil. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But, but the wicked witch, the witch of the, the north, the witch, the witch of the, I think it was the north and the south, don't mistake me, look it up for yourself, but that which goes upward. That's your journey from the bottom to take your journey up to God. And if you take the journey from left to right or right to left, the horizontal, all you want is the, the amenities of this life, the riches. And you think that's going to make you happy. It never will make you happy. You know what the shortest journey is in the Bible? And I'm going to draw this for you real quick. This cross that you worship. See that? This journey from bottom to top is always a longer journey. The journey for things on the earthly level is always a shorter journey. So you can become a hustler. You can become a politician. You can follow the system and be great at that. But being great at God is something else. I give God praises for all the doctors and lawyers and, the, and, the, um, and investors and the mayors and the senators because we need them. For the police department, we need them. The, uh, the, um, the, the EMS, we need them. Somebody gets shot, you call it 911, you, you don't even know how to do compressions. You don't even know you're not even supposed to do compressions because sometimes you push the blood out the body, you kill them. You don't, you, we don't know. I thank you for tuning in. I hope I wasn't offensive. Again, you know when I'm talking, I'm compassionate, but I'm not angry. Uh... Find your toto.
find the person who says enough is enough. Because, uh, okay, let me see. In order to obtain, I wrote so much stuff. In order to obtain illumination, Dorothy had to vanquish the wicked witches of the East and the West. The wicked witches of the East and the West who were forming an evil horizon axis. So when you're forming a horizon axis, like most people say the East is the East is this, but the, the East has been corrupt. And of course the West is corrupt. And what does God say? And I'm going to close on this says as lightning shines from the East unto the West. So shall the coming of the son of man be. God is coming to set down all your kings and rulers from the east to the west because all they taught you from religion to politics is that money makes you better than everybody else. And it is a part of life to want more. Yes, want the money. Ask God for the money and ask to do the right things for the money and try to go and get it. But the wicked witch of the east and the west, those are your enemies. And the wicked witch of the east and the west is money. The root of it all. Sons of man. Yes, sir. Listen, this is where we are. Thank you. I'm glad that people are listening and, and, and waking up to the knowledge of things. Who were forming in an evil horizon axis. The material world. See right now, that's all we care about. You up on there bragging about your money and all this stuff, and you you ain't got nothing. You ain't taking care of family. You ain't taking care of yourself. See, she was wise in listening to the advice of the good witches of the north and the south, the vertical axis, the spiritual dimensions. Remember I told you that God was after the south? <clears throat> God is after the south. So everything that's happening now, man, it's in, it's in Allah's hands. All of the death and destruction in the north New York way and all that stuff. You know, where you from? I'm up from up north, from up north. Man, they wildin', bruh. But then there's a group of people who are saying enough is enough. And so there's, they're running that down here. So now Atlanta is on fire. And T.I. says something about not bringing the violence and y'all run down on T.I. Damn it, man. No, we don't want Vaughn and them dead. They were just rapping me. You can give me the most violent song, and I'm listening to the to the lyrical connection, the wordplay. That's what I'm listening. It ain't going to influence me to do nothing they talking about because I'm not like that. But now, yes, this time when the South rise, it ain't got nothing to do with white skin, but they're going to try. I'm telling you, just last night, I'm Saturday night, my son and, and my me and my brother-in-law and my son outside, right, right near Bellwood, and they riding through with the rebel flags. They riding through with the Trump flags. They seeing where they going to hit first. They ready, but y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready? Go look at my Rainey's black bottom and see how much this black man talk about what white folks did to him, and then he go and do the same darn thing to his own people. The wisdom, the wise one. But he wouldn't touch the white folk. And I'm not talking about regular white folk. I'm going to talk about that in part two of the black man is the devil. So the good witch of the north represents Dorothy's divine spark. We all got a good witch. We all got two good witches. You can call them what you want to call them. The, the, the Holy Spirit, a witch, a, whatever you want to call them, you call them that. The sun of the morning, the light, I don't care. El Shaddai, Elohim, Allah, Jesus. The builder, the sustainer, the nurture, but God wants the South. And all of the people who got dirt up their sleeve, you're going to die of what they say, kill and be killed. They even used the Wizard of Oz in MK Ultra with mind control in the 1940s. Yeah, they did. They used the concept. And they're using the Wizard of Oz on you young folks today with every single riot that was that was um, instigated, they used the same technique that Hitler used to enslave the Jews. They're using that on you. You study that for yourself. I thank you for tuning in. This is Jamil Salibs me out of Manning, South Carolina. Uh, thank you on Instagram if I'm still up. I know y'all ain't used to no talk like this, but hey, we changing things, man. Shout out to Tebow. And shout out to Dale Castro. And I want to say when I do these shows, I'm doing them. 
I'm doing what God tells me to do because for the rest of my life, my journey is going to be different. Like I said, when I was studying Islam, y'all were out hustling. Y'all were doing other things, but I was studying Islam. So my journey is different. Don't get mad at your brother. Protect your brother. Look out for your brother. I don't mean y'all no harm. Y'all know that by now. Any of you that are out there, you know that by now. If I'm talking to you, it's for a reason. Show some respect because I respect my elders and I respect you all. I see the greatness in you. And I want you to climb to that greatness before God takes your life. Because Satan says that I'm going to take all of them with me. And God says, whoever goes with you, I'm going to let them go. Y'all understand that? When that silver rope is cut, that's it. In Islam, we say that we're hanging on to the rope of Allah. I thank all of you for tuning in for this installment of the 19 Report. This is Jamil Salib Zamir, Manning, South Carolina.